We should be able to look face to face to God. So whenever I'm anybody teaching and preaching in this house, it should be to the point where there's no hesitancy. Amen. It should initiate a response. When worship going, because we know the songs. <laughs> and even if a new song comes, we need to be able to be sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit. But that comes through private times. We don't come to church and put all our baggage on the altar. That's the old mindset. That's the veil that needs to be done away with. We don't come to the house of God, and, you know, because we've toiled all week. And we need, you know, we need to spaz out. We need a break. And we treat, we treat God like a spa. We need to treat God like a training center. We need to come into the house of God and say, I'm coming to be empowered. I'm coming to be equipped. I'm coming to get a knowledge that's going to transform, not just me, but generational. And I understand that the principle of application brings the blessing. The principle of application will release the blessing. That, will, that I'm telling you, if you make it a principle in your life and say, I'm going to apply it, and out of that obedience come the activation of your destiny. So the principle of application is what we got to get to. Y'all all right? Yeah. I'm mighty quiet this morning. I still got a good 20 minutes, and I, I'm, I'm doing real good up here. Yeah, we got so much on the inside of us. You got a lot in you. Go to Galatians 2.20. Yeah. It's so important. I lost the notes, so I'm going to give you some notes on how to how to conceive this thing because it's a part of our nature, but I'm more straight into the divinity part. Paul gave us the Paul gave us the clue of hope. Oh, I ain't gonna say that because I'm gonna let me see. Uh, what it means to it's a term in in, in I'm sure um, Toya you probably heard this term, monogenesis. You know what I'm saying? It's coming from the same seed. Mono means same, genesis means birth. Mm -hmm. This is what he's doing. This is what we need to understand. We need to know that we are cut from the same cloth. That we have been included into the family. That the DNA of the Father is in us. We have divine essence in us. We have his divine life. I know it's hard to believe. It's like, man, you, you mean God is in me? Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's made you one with him. Amen. He even told us in John 12 and 32, we make it for worship. If I be lifted up, I'm like, what did he say? Draw, Draw all men. It means drag all men. And that word is into me. That's why he told us in John 17, he prayed a priestly prayer for us. That you may be in us and we may be in you. We haven't gotten it yet because religion won't allow it to happen. Because once you say that I'm, I'm, I'm a connected to a God kind, not that you're God, big G, but you carry his essence on the inside of you. And we haven't yet got to that point because we can't believe it, all of us. It's heavy. That's heavy to tell somebody that you have divinity in you. Because there's a lot of connotation to go with that. But we are. And, and we're only that, not because of anything we've done. Mm -hmm. We're only that because that he that is joined in the Lord is one spirit. Right? Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. We can't be anything other than what he is. Paul told the church in Galatians, we are heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. Because of the spirit of adoption that's in us. So we've been engrafted into a family. Right? We have a DNA in us. Amen. We just don't know how to live it. <clears throat> we don't know how to activate it. We don't know how to birth it. I'm here to tell you, you got to birth this. Amen. Everything I'm saying has to be birthed. Yeah. It has to come through your womb. How do you birth it? Prayer. As soon as you get stuff like this, information on this level, you have to go and say, okay, God, this man is crazy. <laughs> He said that I can experience a level of sanctification. Right? Because regeneration is the process of righteousness being worked out in me. That's the part of the sanctification, right? 
I didn't talk, we haven't talked about sanctification because we're going to talk that is connected to holiness, but sanctification is essential. It is a part of the washing and the renewing. That is basically sanctification, right? Mm -hmm. And so we, Galatians 2.20, we need to get this and get it in our spirit. I have to tell myself, that I, still today I tell myself, this here, this, this is my anthem. I gave you the other one in um, Psalms uh, 17, remember? As for me, what is it? I'll be uphold your faith and righteousness. Right. And I what? And I should not be satisfied until I awake with your righteousness. I tell myself that I ain't gonna be satisfied. I ain't gonna be satisfied being a pastor, satisfied being an apostle, satisfied having a church, satisfied to prophesy, satisfied being able to have wisdom, satisfied because the scrolls are broken, because the word is like honey in my lips and bitter. You know what I'm saying? I'm not all into all that. You know what I'm saying? Because I can tell somebody a word. You know, most of us get satisfied because we can uh, tell somebody a prophetic word. We get excited because we maybe it's on the job or maybe it's on the bus. I don't know where you go, but, you know, just because you can give a word. Nah, I ain't satisfied with that. I'm satisfied when I wake in his likeness. Amen. Not his image. That's orthodox. That's having his mind. But now I'm demonstrating what I know. When I can see what I know, all of a sudden push yeah. back the bell of limitation. Yeah. And I can look at my life and say, wow, God was in this place. That's where we want to go. Anybody with me? Sure. Are oh, you going to sure. just be a few sinner? <laughs> just belong to a church. That stuff is too high for me. It's too heavy for me. It is our, it belongs to us. Amen. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. I like all these eyes again. Don't y'all like all the eyes? Yeah. That I am, which really in the, in the Greek, the am is was. I was crucified with Christ. So were you. Not only Paul speaking, but I was Steve. Steve was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, Christ lived. Not Steve. Get it? Yet not Steve, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which, what? Steve mm -hmm. now lives in the flesh. Steve lived by the faith of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Who loved me and gave himself for me. But nevertheless, Christ lives in me. Right? Mm -hmm. So Steve, me, I live by the Christ that's in me. Amen. Christ in me. So I learned to not lean on my own understanding and I allow the word to become my barometer and I allow the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to guide me. Amen. You get that? Amen. So I got to make sure that I don't go to default in my thinking. I got to make sure that the mind of Christ, let this mind be in you. I got to let it because it doesn't happen automatically. So as I meditate in the, in the word, and I meditate in the scripture. That word, the meditation, comes alive in me. Then I get a witness in my spirit mm -hmm. that something that God said is for me now. Mm -hmm. That's how you change. Most folks haven't experienced that. Trust me. It is a mystery that we have not heard God's voice. It's a boatload of folks that haven't heard God's voice. And, and then there's a good portion that have heard God's voice but don't know his voice. Because he spoke, he's speaking, he spoke, and he will speak to all of us. Amen. Amen. Amen? So now, this is what I wrote. I, old man, was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I, the new creation being that's in me, live. Yet not I, the old man, who was once dead to the things of God, a spirit void of his life, but Christ, with the newness of his life, liveth in me. And the life which I, now the new man, the Christos, the, the, <clears throat> the Christ life, live is by the flesh. I live by the through of oh, Now live in the flesh. I live by or live through the faith of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. So I live through the faith, through the power of his resurrection that's on, in his, on the inside of me that activates the Spirit of Christ through me. <laughs> I live through faith 
by the power of his resurrection that's on the inside of me, amen, that is activated through the spirit of Christ that's in me. So the spirit of Christ in me is the divinity that's in me. That's why we've been made to drink of the self-same spirit. That's the Christos that we're going to talk about. <laughs> that's on the inside of us. That the church hasn't talked about. Because we're trying to perfect our walk with God by the arm of the flesh. Yeah, sir. We're doing it in the sweat of the bra. We haven't learned to lean on God. We haven't learned to trust God. We haven't developed a relationship that what the scripture says, through the spirit we mortify the deeds of the body. We haven't gotten there yet. We're trying to touch not, taste not the hell or not. No, no. It's to a point where <clears throat> you click a spiritual cruise control and let the Holy Spirit take control. Amen. 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 That's where we got to get to, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take about 10 more extra minutes. Is that okay with you guys? So Amen. we can finish this today. See, we got to get there, y'all. I'll tell you that we got to get there. We got to get there. I'm here to tell you. But you know what? It won't, you won't get there until you acknowledge it. Until you make up your mind. Make room in your thinking and say, you know what? I'm going to allow God to take me the way he wants to take me. Uh, take me because he wants to perfect the things that concern me. Yes. So, <clears throat> no, I'll leave that a vital distinction. If we're going to walk out the fulfillment of I myself no longer live, a vital distinction comes between truth and speculation. It is having the reality of Christ in you, not just mentally acknowledging a principle. It is you understanding the conception of being made whole with the Christ that's on the inside of you. And when you understand you've been birthed from above, the janeo and then, the ascended life that I posted this morning, that is being joined to the Lord and your one spirit. Mm -hmm. Because it is his personhood being lived out through your mortal body. I'm going to say that again. It is his personhood that's being lived out through your mortal body. That's why the incarnation is important. Most of us, we, we celebrate his incarnation, but we need to learn how to celebrate your own. The word that you carry has to be made flesh. That is how you're going to live it out. If it's not made flesh, and I already gave it to you, how to make that word flesh? Meditate on the word. What I do after I meditate? I apply the word. What happens when I apply the word? You reap the benefit of the word. How do you reap the benefit of the word? Through obedience. What happens when I walk in obedience? I activate the nature. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's easy as a Sunday morning. <laughs> uh, I don't know, it sounds like a song, though. Yes, that's how easy it is. 